the core case that's been presented by the House managers is that President Trump put his own personal political interests ahead of our national interest, and that he directed the firing of Ambassador Yovanovitch, and he put a hold on badly needed military aid to our strategic partner, Ukraine, because he was trying to extract from the newly elected president of Ukraine a commitment to open a sham investigation on Joe Biden and to announce an investigation into the 2016 election. A pretty good summary, actually, of the Democratic uh, of what the Democrats have said over the past few days. That was Democratic Senator Chris Coons earlier on the show saying that House Democrats have proven their case, in his opinion, against the president over the past three days while they have made their arguments on the floor of the Senate. Tomorrow, the White House will have its turn. Here now with a preview, Hogan Gidley, White House Principal Deputy Press Secretary. Um, Hogan, good to have you here. Um, I, I do want to talk to you about the defense and about what's coming and, and all of that. Um, but first, I do want to ask you question about this this Lev Parnas story that has come up and, and get your, your reaction um, from the White House. This, let, let's play uh, Lev Parnas' soundbite that sort of was the beginning of this story uh, with Rachel Maddow. Do you believe that part of the motivation to get rid of Ambassador Yovanovitch to get her out of post was because she was in the way of this effort to get the government of Ukraine to announce investigations of Joe Biden? That was the only motivation. That was the only reason he said. Yeah, um, that's that's completely ridiculous. Now, listen, I understand Lev Parnas is doing a media tour. And if you notice, he's going to the places like uh, The New York Times, like MSNBC, like CNN. And now we know through leaked audio and video that those um, outlets have one desire and one desire only, and that's to tear down this president and get him out of office. Uh, so we know that's their stated goal. So it makes sense they would have someone like Parnas on. Obviously, he's got his, uh, trouble with the law, federal crimes, indictments, etc. Uh, but the fact is, um, the president has the right, just like any president in history, to put the people uh, in positions on his staff that agree with his foreign policy. Ambassador Yovanovitch did not. It was pretty clear. And in the conversation with President Zelensky, he even told President Trump, she's not good for the administration. She's not working well with us. It's not helpful. She's uh, beholden to a different administration. So it's clear he has the right to do it. Every other president in history has done it. And so the president made a move to put someone in, in the position that, uh, that more aligned closely with his uh, foreign policy. Let's play one more shot uh, from Lev Parnas and just, just get a little bit of a better another look at this watch he fired her actually at the dinner which was the most surprising thing ever I do remember me telling the president that uh, the ambassador was bad-mouthing him and uh, saying that he was going to get impeached something to that effect and at that point he turned around uh, to John DeStefano who was his uh, uh, aide at the time and said uh, fire her and we all there was a silence in the room it's interesting on a number of levels. Uh, one question is the president has said he doesn't know Lev Parnas, and Lev Parnas says that he was in a smaller group at a private dinner with the president and that they were communicating about this. Which, well, that doesn't it, mean he knows so him. He, I mean, he, him? He, sits, he sits down with people all the time, and I can't tell you how many conversations the president has with someone who he's just met for a brief moment. That person gives them some information, and like any uh, principal, they turn to a staff member and say, hey, take care of this for me. Of course we're going to look into that, but it's pretty obvious that Ambassador Yovanovitch did not agree with the president on foreign policy. She was actively working against him, as we now know. So it's his right, just like it's any president's right, to put that staff in place that agrees with him. She didn't, and so she's been replaced. So it feels like, and I think this is, you know, pretty orchestrated, that there's going to be continual drips of information. Uh, this videotape apparently is in the hands of, or audio tape rather, is in the hands of the Southern District of New York and is part of their investigation. Um, but do you have any anticipation that there's going to be an audio recording of a direct conversation between Lev Parnas and the president discussing this? I'm not aware of any. I mean, you know, who knows uh, what's out there? Who knows if someone's uh, making the whole thing up? Who knows if they splice it together and try to pass it off as real? Listen, this is all about uh, the President of the United States being impeached uh, over a phone call uh, in which he was trying to protect the American people's tax dollars. We see this right over your shoulder. I've been there all day. I've been with the legal team all day uh, watching the Democrats try and tear down a president with no proof, with no evidence. It's all hearsay. It's all, um, you know, your father's brother 
brothers, cousins, nephews, former roommates said this about the president. And the only two people that were actually brought up at all who talked directly with the president all said there was no quid pro quo because the president said he didn't want anything from Ukraine. So all this other stuff is a, a big smoke screen. It's something the Democrats are going to try and use to hang their hat on to try and get the president out of office. It's not going to work. He's going to be exonerated because the truth, which, as we all know, will set you free, will prove the fact the president said nothing wrong. In fact, what he did was legal, it was lawful, it was constitutional, and it was on behalf of the American people and their tax dollars. Let's talk about the defense, because you said you were with the attorneys today, and you also spoke to the president today. Did, was the president, did this Love Parnas uh, audio come up when you spoke with the president? I'm, I'm telling you, this whole entire illegitimate sham impeachment process is a blip on his radar. When you saw what he did with that China trade deal, at the very moment the Democrats were marching these ridiculous impeachment orders over that don't even allege a crime, by the way. He goes to Davos with world leaders to talk about trade deals. They're still talking about impeachment. Today, he went to the March for Life, the first president in history to take that strong of a stand and go to those uh, tens of thousands of people who come to this city every, every year on behalf of the sanctity of life, something no one's ever done before. All of those things he's doing on behalf of the American people, and these folks Which are focused on impeachment. We reported on that tonight and Absolutely. last night, by the way, um, because it is it is a significant move there's, there's no doubt about it it's a significant move um, so with regard to the Bidens um, and you heard uh, Senator Kuhn say that it's a, it's just a scam investigation of the Bidens that there's absolutely nothing to that um, how much of an effort is the White House going to put into uncovering your perspective on that in the course of what we see over the next 24 hours of testimony from them. Well, it's interesting. Jay Sekulow and I talked about this briefly before I came over yeah. here, and he went right to the cameras and brought up the point uh, to the press pool there at the, at the Capitol that, you know, it's interesting that Democrats opened the door to that conversation about the Bidens. They sure talked a lot about the Bidens. They sure talked a lot about Burisma. So just how far we're going to go in that defense, I'm going to leave that up to the legal team. But and I don't want to say that only came up. I'm just, you know, thinking about it from their perspective. They would say, well, that it came up, obviously, because that's what the president was pressing for on the phone call, an investigation of the Bidens and Burisma. Right. But it's always funny to watch the media and, and of course, Democrats say there's nothing to see there. It's debunked. It's never been looked at strongly. But the fact is, uh, you know, this team is ready, uh, regardless of, of what the Democrats have thrown at them, because this isn't something that, look, each day they're playing video clips multiple times. It's so repetitive. But it's not the last three days. This is the same argument they've been making for the last three months. So my question, are, we heard Rudy Giuliani lay it out this morning on, on Fox and Friends. Are they talking about this together, the president's attorneys and Rudy Giuliani, um, you know, in terms of, of the way how this all lays out and how they explain to the American people, right. well, here's what we see happened and here's why you should be concerned about it? Is there coordination there? I'm not aware of any conversations between our legal team and Rudy. Obviously, Rudy is the president's personal attorney. You've heard the president speak glowingly about Rudy as a mayor, uh, as a crime fighter for a long time. Uh, but, but our team's focused on uh, the exoneration of the president, which we, we expect to achieve in, in short order. So in terms of timing, um, what did they say about, are they going to take the whole 24 hours? Yeah. Well, again, that remains to be seen. The Democrats have to finish their case tonight. Uh, I can tell you the, the Senate made the point uh, this, uh, this evening, I guess, that they want to have our defense team begin uh, for about three hours tomorrow. So we expect to, to fill some of that time there. Look, we're going to make a full-throated uh, very strong defense. I don't expect a lot of boxing back and forth. I expect our team to come out and throw a few haymakers early on and start to really put the Democrats in their place and show how they misrepresented the truth. Mm -hmm. They lied multiple times. Um, and, and the case is so strong. When you have a firm case like we have where the facts are on your side, it doesn't take as long to present when you say, here it is, here's the evidence, whereas the Democrats are trying to piece and parse things together that aren't, aren't really there. What, what percentage would you say exists that there's going to be a call for witnesses here, that four Republicans will say, we're not done, we want witnesses? Again, we'll see what happens, as the president likes to say. We're ready. If, if they want to do a full-blown full trial, we'll have that conversation. And you better believe we'll be talking Hunter, Hunter Biden, we'll be talking Joe Biden, we'll be talking the whistleblower, we'll be talking Adam Schiff as well. And Mulvaney and Bolton the, if, on the other if, side? If it's something that, well, I will say this. Thankfully, we're in the Senate where things are going to be fair, regardless of how it ends up uh, shaking okay, out. And regardless of what happens, the president's going to be exonerated. He's done nothing wrong. Thanks for coming by. Good Absolutely. to see you. Hogan Thanks Gidley. so much. Uh,